everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining. My name is Joni Young and I'm an acrylic artist. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this beautiful beach wave. We're going to be using some really pretty colors today that I'll list below in the description for you as well as the brushes. We'll begin with turquoise and I'm going to just squeeze my paint right across the center and then align across the top with light ultramarine blue. Squeeze out a few drops of titanium white and a little dot of neon orange in the bottom left hand corner. Using a large blending brush or flat brush, getting it wet first, I'm going to start carefully blending and pulling those two colors together, the blue and the white, in different directions, kind of diagonally, straight across, picking up a little bit more white. So we want to pull and blend these two colors together, making it slightly darker on the top. And we don't want to over blend. We want to leave some patches that are lighter and a little bit darker. I'm going to take a tiny bit of my black and make a light gray color, mixing it with a bit of water, light ultramarine blue and the white. And I'm going to start pulling into that turquoise back and forth trying to make it nice and smooth right on the horizon line and then I'm going to pick up some white and start making it a little bit lighter right back there in the distance and I'm going to take some white squeeze that out right onto the canvas start tapping and lightly pulling By doing this, it makes it look like the water's a little rougher back there and there's little uh, waves and motion in the water. Now here, closer to the foreground, we're going to use a little bit of orange, a little bit of black, white, a little bit of yellow, create a beachy sand color. Now without washing my brush, I'm going to pick up just a little bit of black and start pulling it across the base of where the wave is going to start to form. I'm going to blend it so it kind of fades into that turquoise and then pull a line across right above the ocean. Whatever's left in my brush right now, I'll work out and scumble around in the sky. Okay, I want to add some more of that light ultramarine blue now and really build up this color. I'm not going to over blend. I just want a few areas here that are going to be stronger in color and then I'm going to soften the bottom right here. Later on we're going to add a few clouds. I'm going to blend in where this wave is going to be right here and start creating some shadows and highlights in the water and patches where that foam Part of the wave is going to come right across diagonally here using a bit of black for the very darkest shadow and then a thick amount of white so we've got like a ridge of white on the very tip of my brush that I'm just almost caking on there so it looks 3D and you can feel that how thick it is once it dries. I'm going to slide my brush back and forth barely touching the canvas to create all those little pockets in that wave in the water where it separates the, the foam part of the water separates and then you can see the sand and some of that turquoise underneath. So I'm going to add a little bit of my cadmium yellow, a little bit of orange to that white and to the green. a little bit more black and build up this shadow color some more. This is what's going to make your wave look 3D. It's important to have all those highlights and shadows. Using the corner of my brush with a little bit of black and white. Little dabs. Just tapping and dabbing my brush to create little soft peaks for clouds. I'm 
Now at this point, I'm not really sure. I'm just kind of playing around with if I want this many clouds, how many I want, the sizes, the types of clouds I want to have. I'm going to take my liner brush, pull into water and white paint and start creating a few more details here, some finer details, curving up with my brush, little lines. So you've got to do this very, very lightly and hardly touch that canvas at all. If you push with a brush, it won't work. It'll be too, your lines will be too thick and you'll lose those fine little skinny details that are really important for creating that movement in the water and that feel of that your painting is not flat and it's more 3D. And when you pull that white in the background, we're creating soft little waves, little white caps way back there. And we'll build up to our biggest wave here in the foreground, taking our any mop brush that you have will work for this. You don't want to get it wet and you're going to need quite a bit of white paint if you're working wet on wet like I am here. So wet on wet obviously just means that I'm not waiting for my paint underneath to dry first before adding my next layer. I like painting in this style because I make so many other mid-tones during the process that would take me a long time otherwise if I waited for each layer to dry first. So I'm tapping and then softly pulling back and forth. So this is the top of our wave with all those highlights. And I'm going to let that sit for a little bit and I'm going to come back with my light ultramarine blue and a filbert brush. I want to have some bit of separation with this white on the wave and inside the wave. So we need to build up our shadows a little bit more and our contrast. So I'm also going to add that blue at the bottom where the water is coming up onto the shore, onto the beach. And in this area here too. So this light ultramarine blue and turquoise are very complementary colors. That's why I really wanted to choose this blue for the sky and as well as the shadows in the water and along the beach. So you can blend it slightly down right on the bottom here so that your black paint isn't so harsh looking. So just do that very softly so you don't lose that nice shadow that we've built up. I'm going to use my fan brush now. I've got a mini fan brush just so I can show you guys how you can create different looks and textures. So if you don't have a mop brush, you're at home wondering how can I paint this, I don't have a mop brush, you, you can easily use a fan brush. There are a few different brushes that you can use. You can use a stipple brush. Now I'd like to take a little bit of my neon orange and mix that with the white too for highlights. That way you get some nice warm uh, tones to your highlights and that peach color that you create with the orange and white is very complementary to the light ultramarine blue as well. So I'm going to curve up these lines. This all helps to create the feeling of that wave curling around and coming over. I'm going to take some black, just a little bit of black with a white and tap in a muddy color here just to break up all those pretty colors. You need to do that once in a while in a painting um, to make it look a little bit more real. Get those mid-tones. Soft little shadow in here of that light gray color. And then we'll softly blend it out. I'm going to add just a little bit more dark gray here and then I'm going to pull in some phthalo green and add it right down here at the base of the wave 
I want to intensify the color a little bit more in the saturation. I'm going to pull a little bit of it right underneath the highlight, the white stuff on the top of the wave that's curling over. And then a line across the horizon. And we'll just softly blend that out. Now with a clean brush and a little bit of titanium white, I'm going to dab it right here in the middle of the wave where it's going to be the lightest. Very softly blend. And then begin to add some more highlights. We'll then pick up a little bit of the cadmium yellow, a little bit of orange, mix it with the white and change the tone and the hue up a little bit down here. We're going to warm up. We've got a cool green, that turquoise and phthalo green are cool greens and now we want some warm greens closer to the foreground and the beach area. Maybe there's a little bit of seaweed in the water that's getting picked up and pulled into that wave. I also like to add just a little bit of peach to my clouds up top there you'll notice and and the highlights of the wave I think I talked about that a little bit earlier but it's really really pretty to have that warm uh, tone to your highlights especially with this blue so we'll add a little bit of this and I'll see how I like it I'm still uh, unsure about my clouds and my sky I don't want my sky to compete too much with the wave and this water I want this wave to be the center of interest into this painting and I don't want it to compete too much with the sky so sometimes if you have too much going on in a painting it can be too busy and the viewer will lose interest and you'll just overall lose that feeling that you're trying to perceive in your painting so keep that in mind guys that's just a little tip for you should always pick one thing in a painting that you want to focus on. I'm going to add some more highlights and pattern here in the water. Those lines kind of curving in and around. And I'll just keep building up my highlights and finish off this painting again dabbing a little bit of that peach with the white in there I think I'm gonna keep my clouds as is I don't think they're too busy looking I'm pretty happy with the feeling of this painting and this wave and this serene tranquil mood that I've created I'm happy with it I hope you guys are too uh, I hope that you learned some tips and tricks today so that you can easily paint your own wave. I want to thank you guys again so much for watching and tuning in and supporting my channel and art. Have a wonderful day you guys. Enjoy your weekend, happy painting, and I'll see you next time very soon in another video. Please leave a comment below, like this video, and of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Bye for now!